Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. What we'd like to show you is the mixing of a low strength calcium hydroxide based material for application against fresh cut tooth structure for pulpal protection. There are many low strength calcium hydroxide pastes available. The one that we're going to mix today is the one that we use here at school and it's the Life material uh, manufactured by the Kerr company here in Romulus. The material comes as a two paste system. It's mixed on a paper pad with a little application instrument and then we'll apply it directly into one of our teeth that we've completed caries removal on. We'll use the base paste first with a white cap. And we'll place about two millimeters of material in one area towards the center of the paper pad itself. Keep the top on so the material doesn't uh, leak out onto the tabletop. And then a similar amount of the catalyst paste and again being sure not to put them adjacent but not actually touching each other so that the reaction doesn't start until we're ready to begin mixing the materials. After we've dispensed an equal amount, we'll pick up the application instrument and use the long end of the blade to pull the two paste together and mix them rather quickly so that we get a uniform color as the white and the cream colored paste are mixed together. Once we have uniform color, we'll take a small piece of gauze square wipe off the excess, again pick up just the smallest amount. We'll now bring one little drop of the material in and place it directly on the axial wall. Begin to move that material out towards the periphery, making sure that our margins stay clean of, of the base material. Maybe a second anchor might be in order to be sure that we have covered all the areas and have an even thickness of the paste around the periphery of the dental area. This material is going to be used for uh, pulpal protection because it is uh, impermeable in nature and will sufficiently resist the conductivity of hot and cold through to the nerve and it also will provide stimulation for secondary dentin formation We would like to now show you the mixing of a low strength zinc oxide eugenol based material that is used as an interim dressing during the time that a patient may be uh, in between dental appointments or as a medication after urgency treatment and caries removal such as we've already completed in the laboratory. The low strength base uh, is a powder liquid mixture that is brand name Tempac and used, as I say, for short-term interim dressings here in the school. It's a powder and a liquid mixed on a paper pad, parchment pad, and we'll dispense it with a little powder dispenser and then mix it with a heavy bladed, wide bladed spatula and then place it properly into this tooth that we have previously done caries removal. The powder should be fluffed a little bit and then we'll Use the powder measure, which has a large end and a small end. And in this case, we'll take the, the large end first, press it into the powder uniformly, and then put one increment in the center of the pad. The ratio for powder to liquid is very critical in terms of the kind of physical properties we want the final material to have. The ratio of powder to liquid for a standard mix of Tempac is one drop powder to one drop liquid to one dispensing of powder large cup to one drop of liquid. We'll put two large scoops so we have enough material to place into that cavity and then we'll take the small scoop and we'll put an increment of powder up near the corner of the pad 
in case we need a little extra powder to make the right consistency when we're near the end of our mixing procedure. The liquid is primarily eugenol. It's a rather viscous liquid. We'll dispense two drops Hold the dropper nearly vertical so we get full drops at the time they're dispensed. The powder then we will divide into two separate amounts and one of those amounts into halves again. We'll mix the largest increment in first. Mixing time is not critical here, but we do want to get it mixed in a reasonably short period of time. As soon as that powder liquid becomes saturated with powder, we'll then mix one of the fourths in and begin to develop a powder uh, putty type mass that can be used in the mouth. Pull the material that's been mixed together and we'll put the last increment of powder in and with heavy pressure on that heavy blade we can incorporate as much of that powder as possible. It should pick up from the pad um, by curling on the instrument, still a little bit light, we'll use just a little bit of the powder from the extra, pull it in, and then mix, give a little more body and a little more strength to the material. As we minimize the amount of matrix and maximize the amount of unreactive particles from the powder that will remain in our final mix. We'll then, on occasion, when we have a large amount of strength that we need or a longer term interim dressing, we could bring over some cotton fibers, small amount of cotton fibers that can be used to, uh, to uh, incorporate into that mix by merely dropping it in. In this case, we'll go without the cotton in order to show the insertion of the material into the tooth. Put that there, we'll bring our powder over and then try to roll into a roll that we can cut now and place directly into the tooth per se. We'll use the SP1 instrument with the flat blade and we'll cut off a small section of this and we'll carry it now over to the tooth for placement into the tooth per se. Carry that increment over to the area where we have the cavitation that we've already placed calcium hydroxide against that pulpal area. And we'll go back for another larger increment. And we'll develop then our contour as we bring this material to uh, final placement. Put some on the occlusal per se. As we near the end of our condensing, we'll occasionally use a moist uh, uh, cotton pellet to uh, adapt the margins and then come back with our burnisher. Trying again to get the anatomy to blend in as best we can. We would like to demonstrate for you the mixing of a polymer reinforced zinc oxide eugenol cement. The material that we'll be using in the laboratories and clinics is called Intermediate Restorative Material, or IRM. The material is manufactured by the LD Koch Company in Milford, Delaware. The primary use for this material in dentistry is for long-term temporization 
or as an interim restoration during prolonged operative procedures. The armamentarium used or required for mixing is the IRM powder and liquid with the dropper for dispensing the liquid onto the pad. A measuring scoop is provided by the manufacturer for volumetrically measuring the powder. A medium-sized parchment mixing pad is used as the mixing surface, parchment being preferable to paper. Parchment will resist the absorption of the liquid into the mixing surface during dispensing. A large mixing spatula, the number 336 spatula, or SP9, is used to mix the material, and the Tarno number one filling instrument, the SP1, and the number 25 Wesco plugger, the CD7, are used for inserting the material into the prepared cavity. A paper towel or two by two gauze square should be available to assist in the cleanup procedures. In dispensing the powder onto the pad, the powder should be fluffed lightly in the bottle to ensure uniform density of the powder during measuring. The measuring scoop is filled to excess with the powder without packing it into the container. The scoop is leveled of excess powder using the flat edge of the mixing spatula. The powder is dispensed out onto the center of the mixing pad. One dispensing of powder is made for each drop of liquid that is going to be used in the intended mix. In this case, we'll dispense two drop, two scoops of powder and also prepare a third scoop and place it in the upper corner of the mixing pad for use later during the insertion of the material into the prepared cavity. The powder that's dispensed onto the mixing pad is then subdivided into two equal portions. One of those portions is further subdivided into two smaller portions. The liquid is then prepared by swirling within the liquid container to ensure uniformity of composition. The dropper is used to obtain material, the first drop being dispensed back into the container. Two drops are then dispensed out onto the mixing pad adjacent to the largest increment of powder, the dropper being held perpendicular to the pad to ensure uniformity of drop size. The mixing should then proceed immediately by incorporating the largest increment of powder with a folding action into the liquid. This is carried on until all of the powder is wetted by the liquid and then each of the two remaining increments are added to that bulk of mixed material to increase the powder liquid ratio and provide the initial, initial stage of mixing. This portion of the mixing procedure should take approximately 45 to 50 seconds. As the material is mixed, the consistency is very dry, friable, certainly not any usable consistency for application. Once the majority of the powder is incorporated into the liquid, the heavy blade of the spatula is used with heavy pressure to stroke the material and attempt to gain homogeneity and to provide a lowered viscosity more suitable for application along the prepared walls of a cavity. The total mixing time to prepare the material should be approximately 60 seconds. The spatula is then dipped in, cleaned and dipped in powder and used to roll the material into a rope from which it can be cut into appropriate sections made ready for application directly to the cavity preparation. The application is made using either the Tarno number no. one or SP1 instrument and contouring of the material using the Wesco number no. 25 plugger or the CD7. 
in cleaning up material from the mixing spatula or the instruments. This should be done while the material is still in its unset condition. If allowed to harden, orange oil may be necessary in order to complete the cleaning procedure. We have demonstrated for you a relatively precise mixing procedure for a reinforced zinc oxide eugenol cement when used for interim restoration. By following such a technique, you will obtain good ha clinical handling characteristics in the mix, while at the same time gaining optimum physical properties in the set cement. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.